Americans will never buy or sell real estate the same way again. And as far as the real estate agents, well, you guys are looking at up to a 50% reduction in your commission. Yeah, things have just changed due to a big time ruling that upsets the apple cart. Now, there are over 1 million real estate agents out there today. They're going to be a lot fewer after this ruling goes into effect. Now, for the ones that remain, they're going to have to retool the agents, the brokerages. Uh, and I've been saying it for years. You need multiple streams of income. You cannot rely on just one stream of income. It's 2024. This is not the days of Warden June Cleaver, the 1950s. No, but real estate agents have been reluctant to listen to me. They thought that all they needed was their picture on their card. And, you know, things would just work out. Well, the times they have definitely changed. Now, before we get into this, I want to make something clear. The In the state of Maryland, which I doubt is different from many other states, we got a very complex contract for the transaction of real estate. I could imagine that California's is probably more complicated. New York's even more. Our contract here in Maryland is 11 pages long. 11 pages of legalese, and I'm not an attorney. So if I'm going out there and I'm buying real estate, you can bet your bottom dollar I'm using a real estate agent, all right? Just as if I would go into a court of law, I would not go in there unrepresented. I feel that whatever I pay for this represent representation is probably going to save me a hell of a lot of money that I might have to pay if I run into something that, you know, is unforeseen based on my unfamiliarity with that real estate contract. Now, invariably, every time I do a segment on uh, the residential real estate sales world, someone or several someones in the comments will say, well, back in 1982, I represented myself and I bought my home and I didn't have any problem. I congratulate you. That is awesome. Uh, however, I would say that uh, many people do not have that level of confidence in representing themselves on what is argu arguably the most expensive transaction that most of us will ever make. So for those of you who feel as though you can do it on your own, knock yourself out. Uh, but there is a large contingent of us who don't feel that way. So I do thank the real estate agent, the competent experienced real estate agent is necessary. All right. So this isn't a real estate agent bashing session, but things are about to change for them and for the brokerages. We're supposed to see a lot of them go out of business, getting really competitive because the 6% commission on buying or selling a home is gone after the Realtors Association agrees to a seismic settlement in a sweeping move expected to dramatically reduce the cost of buying and selling a home. The National Association of Realtors announced Friday a settlement with groups of home sellers agreeing to end landmark antitrust lawsuits by paying $418 million in damages and eliminating rules on commissions. Now, let's start from the top. CNN characterizes this as a, uh, the potential for a dramatic reduction in the cost of buying and selling a home. I disagree. First of all, the commission is but one variable in the equation that can drive up home prices. We also got interest rates, okay? Uh, in addition to the uh, interest rates, you have things like real estate taxes, okay? So those two factors play heavily into the equation. Inflation also plays a huge role in the actual cost of the house. And this is, has nothing to do with the real estate agent. So under the current paradigm, you've got a seller who says, I want to put my house on the market for $100,000 and I'm going to offer 6% commission. Now, a word about the 6% commission. There is a misconception that this is written in stone. No, it isn't. If a realtor came to you and said, hey, look, I want to put this up for, I want to help you sell your home for 6%, and you just said, okay, that's your fault. Everything's negotiable. So you let's just use 3% because the math, 6% uh, because the math is easier, right? So you put your home on the market for $100,000 at 6% commission total. So 3% of that is going to go to the buyer's agent. 
Yes, that's right. The person representing the buyer, not you, the seller. And then 3% is going to go to the seller. Okay, let's, making the math easy. So now uh, this argument that CNN is making is, oh, well, they could sell the house for $94,000 if it wasn't for the commission, or at least ninety seven dollars if all you had to pay was the seller's agent, right? Not necessarily so. Uh, I do agree that, hey, look, when you do uh, business with an attorney, all right, you pay your attorney, the opposing side pays their attorney, and you're not ordered to pay anyone else's legal fees unless there's some sort of court order to do so. But in most of the legal transactions, you pay your side, other person pays their side. So, okay, fine. I'm not saying that the decision doesn't make sense, but what I am saying is do not expect that just because this has changed that it's going to result in some drastic reduction of home prices. That is a falsehood. That's a lie. You got, in our example, $6,000, well, really $3,000 when you just eliminate the buyer because the seller is saying, hey, I raised my hand. I want to be represented, right? So just $3,000. But look at what inflation has done to home prices. Look at what increases in the interest rate have done to home prices, okay? So the realtor's a small part of that. So uh, the NAR, they represent over a million realtors. There'll be far less of them here in the near future. The part-time agent is gone. They're not going to be able to make any money in this environment uh, where you're going to have professional, experienced, client-focused folk rise to the top, okay? Remember, this industry is not being disrupted by technology. It's being disrupted by a legal decision. So the NAR agreed to put in place a set of new rules. One of those rules prohibits agents' compensation from being included on listings placed on local centralized listing portals known as the multiple listing service. Now, critics say that, led to broke, uh, that has led brokers to push more expensive properties on customers. This is another point I disagree with. And the reason I disagree with that is because a Tyrone is not going out here and getting pre-approved for a million dollar home, all right? So you can show me all the million dollar homes you want and you can push those homes on me. Uh, I'm not going to be able to shop for anything that is in excess of what I have been approved by a uh, lender to purchase, all right? Or if I'm coming to the table with a certain amount of cash, Look, once that's verified, they're going to say, hey, well, Tyrone has X amount of dollars. Uh, he has $250,000 in cash to buy a home, okay? Which I would never put that much money down on any one thing. Uh, but yeah, this is what he got. He's going to put it all down on the house. Uh, so he's approved for $250,000. <clears> he, we verified he has the cash. Uh, then they're not going to say, well, you can look at a million dollar house. Okay, I don't have a million dollars, right? So this whole notion that, oh, they're pushing more expensive properties on people. That's a red herring. Uh, another one of their recent rules ends the requirement that brokers subscribe to what's known as the multiple listing system or the MLS. Many of which these MLS services are, are owned by National Association of Realtors, real, uh, real estate agents, realtors, realtors, whatever you want to call them, owned by their subsidiaries. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, on these services, homes are given a wide viewing in a local market. Now, this is where kind of the Zillows and these other services come in, which provide you with that view uh, without having to necessarily deal with an MLS. Another new rule will require buyers brokers to enter into written agreements with their buyers. So if you're representing a buyer, that buyer is going to have to have some money to be represented, all right? And again, if I'm a buyer, yeah, I want representation. Now, how much is that representation worth? That's something that me and that agent can work out. But uh, an 11-page contract filled with legalese and I'm not an attorney, uh, you can call me what you want. But no, I'm not entering into that without representation uh, because I don't want to run into... Well, let's just say I want to mitigate the potential of running into issues in the future that could cost me money and cost me time uh, based on the fact that I didn't really understand the, the contract fully. Now, the agreement effectively will destroy the current home buying and selling business model.
the business model. Not the industry, but the business model. A lot of these brokerages that are built on this, bye-bye. In this current model, sellers pay both their broker and the buyer's broker. And we talked about that earlier. Uh, you know, thinking rationally about it, why would you do it? Now, critics say that this has driven housing prices artificially higher. We addressed that also. That's a lie. Inflation and uh, interest rates and general appreciation of the homes has driven prices higher. And then we always talk about the fact that uh, Real estate is a hyper-local market. So if I buy a home in LA, yeah, that's going to be pretty doggone expensive. It's a very populated area in high demand. I buy a property in the area where I live, not nearly as expensive, right? Because there's not as much demand uh, to be here. By some estimates, real estate commissions are expected to fall 25 to 50%. According to TD Cohen Insights, this will open up opportunities for alternate models of selling real estate that already exist, but don't have much market share, including flat fee and discount brokerages. Absolutely. And again, this is where uh, the people who have built real deal businesses, I'm not talking about the part-time agent who's making an extra, you know, 20 grand a year by doing three or four deals. Now I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about people who actually have a business. They're going to need to retool in order to adjust to this new paradigm. And the other thing if they haven't done it already, they're going to need another stream of income, which is in an industry adjacent to residential real estate. We've been preaching this forever, uh, but, you know, uh, some have listened. I, I won't be uh, totally, uh, I, I won't make it look like no one has listened. A lot of people indeed have, and they have set up businesses in the financial services industry, which is adjacent, that if you buy a home, You've made one financial services type of transaction. It's a, the biggest financial transaction most of us will make. So a lot of people, after they do that, are more inclined to look at other areas of their finance, uh, of their finances and financial picture. Shares of real estate firms like Zillow and Compass both fell by more than 13% on Friday as investors feared that lower commission rates for agents could lead to less business for real estate platforms. I think yeah, real estate platforms as they're currently constituted based on the current model, absolutely. In a 10K filing last month, Zillow warned that, quote, if agent commissions are meaningfully impacted, it could reduce the marketing budgets of real estate partners or reduce the number of real estate partners participating in the industry. I think both of which will happen. Uh, and they go on to say, which could adversely affect our financial condition and results of operations, unquote. Shares of real estate brokerage Redfin also fell nearly 5%. Meanwhile, home builder stocks rose on the news. Lennar shares gained 2.4%. Pulte Group shares 1.1% and Toll Brothers 1.8%. Now, let me tell you something about these home buyers. These, these uh, home buyers are big companies. They're corporations. They're well-funded. Some of them discourage you from doing business with a real estate agent because they want you to come in there unrepresented, all right? And who in their right mind would go and ink a deal with a publicly traded big corporation for a 30-year commitment without having representation? Again, some might, I wouldn't. So that's why these home builder stocks are increasing because the general thinking is, well, they're probably going to be able to uh, really see some more traction on discouraging agents from coming in there because they're not going to pay anything for the buyer's representation, okay? Uh, and that's lifting their shares because that's a, to the extent that they do, and many of them uh, do a very limited amount of that. It's not the full 3% commission, but to the extent that they can stop any compensation, then of course, that will add to their uh, margins. For the average priced American home for sale, $417,000 sellers are paying. Sellers are paying more than $25,000 in brokerage fees. Those costs are passed on to the buyer, boosting the price of homes in America. Uh, again, we already talked about that being but one factor. Uh, CNN ignores inflation and they ignore interest rates. Uh, that fee could fall between uh, 
could fall by between $6,000 and $12,000, according to TD Cohen Insights analysis. Uh, yeah, I do think that it will fall. So you're going to find more real estate agents uh, doing volume business or discount, you know, discounted volume business to make, in many cases, even more money. Uh, but you'll find that these brokerages that are uh, leveraged with a lot of real estate, okay, for folk to come into an office and sit down in a luxurious conference room, uh, they're going to need to change or they're going to find that it's going to be uh, untenable economic proposition to continue operating like that, especially in a post-2020 world where, hell, uh, everybody's doing business remotely. This will also be, ironically, a, another blow to the uh, commercial real estate sector when all of these uh, real estate brokerages that have these offices say, hey, you know what? We got to go to a model that's more virtual and you take EXP, for example, they're one of the brokerages that have this virtual model, have had it since their inception, where they don't have people coming into these. They don't have, you're not going to drive by a big old EXP office every five to 10 miles. Quote, while the settlement comes at a significant cost, we believe the benefits it will provide to our industry are worth that cost, said Kevin Sears, president of the National Association of Realtors in a statement. In November, a federal jury in Missouri found the National Association of Realtors and two brokerages liable for $1.8 billion da uh, in damages for conspiring to keep agent commissions artificially high. Got a problem with that word artificial. Again, when you're talking about, if you're a proponent of the free market, uh, folk are going to pay what they believe something is worth. They're going to be willing to pay what they believe it is worth. And again, 6% is not a de facto standard. Okay, it is negotiable. Everything is negotiable, guys. I think that's one of the uh, rules of acquisition. Uh, if you're a fan of Star Trek and the Ferengi, I'm sure that everything being negotiable is somewhere in the rules of acquisition. Because this was an antitrust case, the National Association of Realtors was potentially on the hook for what are called trouble damages or tripled the damages levied. Uh, it would have been $5.4 billion. The NAR had pledged to appeal the case, but other brokerages settled, and eventually so did the NAR. All right, this is why you cannot count on the government. You can't count on one particular business model. You got to be nimble. You got to have another stream of income. Realtors, hear me. People in general, hear me on this. Because, hey, if you don't have another stream of income and something like this happens, what are you going to do, right? It could upend your entire Apple cart. And if you're sitting there thinking, well, I'm almost ready to retire. I'll get my Social Security. Social Security is the biggest scam on earth. We just did a video about it. It's the worst investment you could ever make, but you're forced to make it. Watch that video. We'll continue to talk about the need for multiple streams of income. Guys, I'll talk to you soon.